The police have tried to tell me that there was a disagreement between Preston's people and my people, but that's the what I know about it. Right now on Up With Krem, a second suspect was arrested for the murder of a Spokane Valley teen. Plus, in an exclusive interview, why one suspect believes he's innocent. For the first time in Spokane history, four new middle schools will be named at the same time. This morning, we take a look at the final submissions. Unfortunately, these sorts of attacks are becoming more frequent. Could gas prices soon be spiking? Why that's a possibility after cyber criminals attack a massive gas line. A few lingering showers in higher elevations today, but all in all, we're starting to warm up and dry up across the inland northwest. Up with Krem starts right now. Well, good morning and welcome to Up with Krem. Ooh, this morning we are talking about this video showing a tiger roaming a Houston neighborhood. Yeah. OMG. It's a crazy story this morning. It's all over social media, so we're going to check, check it out. It's not the first time this kind of thing happened in this city. This is crazy. Ooh. Imagine if you're just driving down the street and you see a literal tiger. Mm -hmm. Oh, no, thank you. N -O. We've got a lot more on that story coming up for you on your Monday morning. Uh, imagine if you're driving down the street and you don't see that tiger or you're walking down the street and you don't see that. What if you have your dog? Uh, skirt, skirt. <laughs> Baxter would be pulling yeah. uh, Tim way away from him. Yeah. Oh my goodness, you can be your guard dog too. Yeah, oh my goodness. Well, you're going to want to see that video coming up in just a little bit. But first, let's talk weather. Jeremy's outside in the Outdoor Weather Center. Jeremy, just how warm will it get this week? Ooh, we're talking warm temperatures. Now, not our warmest temperatures so far this year, as we've said before, but mid 70s and a mix of clouds and sun is about perfect. Right now we sit at 42 degrees, slightly chilly as you head out the door, but dress in layers later on today. We're going to be warmer than we were all weekend here in Spokane. Sun is up and I can see it getting ready to shine through some clouds here. I, I think in a matter of a couple minutes, we all get to see plenty more sun. 42 in Spokane, 34 in Deer Park, 44 in Coeur d'Alene, 43 up in Sandpoint, and temps hovering near 40 across much of the inland northwest. Keep in mind our 6 o'clock hour this time of year is the coldest hour of the entire day. We've got a low pressure center down to the south, and that is going to play a big role in what we wind up seeing. It is going to be more of what we saw over the weekend. That's some of those scattered light mountain showers elsewhere. It's that mix of clouds and sun taking us through the day. And I think we get a few of those today. I think tomorrow they're a little more widespread. We get enhancement as we get a little short wave moving through. Another quick round of moisture and then it's temps on the rise, but today not looking too bad. 67 for us here in Spokane, 64 in Coeur d'Alene and temps in the 70s out in central Washington. Jeremy, thanks so much. Let's get to our big story now at six. An update to a story we've been following for more than a month now. This morning, a second suspect is in custody in connection to the murder of a Spokane Valley teen. Well, over the weekend, police in Nevada arrested a 17 year old girl. They believe she's connected to the death of 15 year old Preston Grisgorik, who was shot and killed outside of his apartment in March. Yeah, and we do have Nicole or Brandon T. Jones now live at the courthouse. Brandon, what did you learn about the investigation? over the weekend. Tim, Dana Marie, over the weekend on Saturday, police arrested a teenage girl in Sparks, Nevada. She's not being named at this point because she's still a minor, but according to the Spokane County Sheriff's Office, she's being extradited to the Spokane County Jail. At this point, we don't know how she's connected to the murder, but back in March, witnesses told investigators a young woman used the purchase of vape pens to lure Preston outside his apartment the night he was killed. Local investigators have not confirmed whether the juvenile arrest in Nevada is that young woman, but last week, Spokane County Sheriff's Office arrested 19-year-old Stephen Yoler on first-degree murder charges related to the shooting. Court documents say he is seen in surveillance video chasing Preston down before his death. Investigators used the suspect's driver's license photo to identify him in the video. In an exclusive interview, Yoler told Krim 2 he's innocent of the crime. If there was surveillance video that showed me at the crime, they would have grabbed me a lot sooner than over in a month and a half. You feel me? This happened April 29th or March 29th, something like that. And then they just picked me up yesterday morning. The suspect says he only knew the victim from Snapchat and denies any dispute between the two. 
Yoler is currently in the Spokane County Jail being held on a $1 million bond. Once we get more details on the 17 year old girl being transported here to Spokane County, we'll bring you those updates as soon as possible. Tim, Dana Marie. Brandon, thanks so much for tracking that for us. We'll keep you updated on crim.com. Right now, authorities are trying to fix the damage left behind by a cyber extortion attempt that forced the shutdown of a vital pipeline in the U.S. Now, the attack was carried out by a criminal gang called the Dark Side. The gang fancies itself as a high-tech Robin Hood, stealing from corporations and giving a cut of the money they squeeze out of them to charity. Meanwhile, the shutdown of the pipeline is still underway as the Biden administration makes an effort to restore operations and avoid disruptions in the fuel supply. It's an all hands on deck effort right now, and we are working closely with the company, state and local officials to you know, make sure that they get back up to normal operations as quickly as possible and there aren't disruptions in supply. The pipeline operated by Georgia-based Colonial Pipeline carries gasoline and other fuel from Texas to the Northeast. The company says it delivers about 45% of fuel consumed on the East Coast. Time for your morning rush. More news in less time. So let's get right to it. An Idaho man who participated in the January 6th attack on the U.S. Capitol has his next federal court hearing today. 34 year old Josiah Colt from Meridian pleaded not guilty to the charges against him in March. He's facing four criminal charges. If convicted, he faces up to 20 years in prison. And today in D.C., the House Committee on Administration is scheduled to hold a virtual hearing on oversight of the January 6th attack. Governor Brad Little signed a bill that could allow up to 90% of the state's wolves be killed. The bill allows state to pay private contractors to kill the wolves and also reduce restrictions on hunters and trappers as well. The bill was opposed by the Idaho Fish and Game Commission, who says the law removes regulatory power from wildlife experts and puts it in the hands of politicians. The State Department of Corrections is allowing in person visits again. The new guidelines went into effect last week. Now, the visits were paused back in March of last year due to COVID-19, and that means many inmates haven't seen their loved ones in person for more than a year now. The DOC will allow hour-long visits once a month. The visitors must be 16 years or older and pass a COVID screening test. Well, Spokane is aiming to reduce greenhouse gas emissions by 95% in the year 2050. The city's Sustainability Action Subcommittee did release a draft of the plan to achieve that, and they want your input. They're hosting virtual workshops to the public. For times, dates, and a link for how to join, head over to creme.com. The Spokane Shock announced they are partnering with the Wishing Star Foundation for their annual Send a Friend a Goat campaign. So basically you pay to send a goat to a friend and that money goes to granting wishes to critically ill children. This is the 16th year of the event. Orders are actually now closed though to send a baby goat to a friend. Yeah. For more information though, you can visit creme.com and you can look at all the baby goats. Look how cute they are. Aww. And don't forget, you can only watch the shock on the CW22. And don't forget their first game is this Saturday, Saturday against the Frisco Fighters. And that's your morning rush. More news in less time. Let us know what's happening in your neighborhood by using the hashtag up with creme on social media. All right, we're going to get straight to what's trending online. It's a video everybody is talking about this morning. Check it out. Take a look. This is showing a tiger roaming free in a Houston neighborhood. You can see a tiger with a collar on just roaming around this front yard, laying down, hanging out, clearly not phased by people around it taking Gosh. some video. At one point, though, someone who we're told is actually an off duty oh. sheriff's de deputy comes out. You can see him right there, points his gun at the animal until it appears the tiger's owner then brings the animal indoors into a home. Yeah, so this must oh. be a house pet. According to neighbors, shortly after the guy in the video put the tiger in a car and took off before police arrived. A lot of people have questions, rightfully so, about uh, is this even legal? 
Do you have to worry about your neighbor having a tiger? Well, here are some answers. So yes, tigers and other dangerous animals are allowed in Texas what? if they're registered with local animal control or the sheriff. Yeah, what the heck? They also need the proper paperwork and need animal insurance, just to name a few. Now, according to neighbors, shortly later, the guy in the video did put the tiger in the car. Uh, so again, guys, this video is crazy. Not surprised it's going viral. Wow. They, it must just be treated like a house cat. Uh, a giant house cat. Uh, <laughs> like a house cat that can kill you at yeah. any moment in time. This is bonkers. And the fact that he came out and so aggressively grabbed right. it, buddy, that tiger is way stronger than you. I watched a lot of Animal Planet as a kid. Yeah. All right, and so apparently the last couple of years there's been a tiger sighting in Houston twice. So back wow. in February of 2019, uh, there was a tiger found in an abandoned home. So clearly, what? yeah, this type of, well, the fact that it's legal does allow right. more people to have these type of animals. But I don't it's know, like, I just feel bad for the tigers. This yeah. is not a, a conducive right. environment for a wild animal. Yeah, what was that color? Was that a shot color? Was it like, oh, uh, I don't want to know. You That's know how dogs awful. have those like invisible fences? Does mm. the tiger have an invisible <sighs> fence? Maybe. Uh, I think I, it could break through an invisible fence yes. too. I had a great Pyrenees <laughs> growing up and we had an invisible fence and he would look me in like, the eye nope. and saunter through those shocks <laughs> until he got out. Wow. Yeah. All I got to say is hashtag only in Texas. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh my goodness. Well, let us know what you think about that. Use the hashtag up with creme and let us know. All right. Tax season is a bit different this year, but the IRS can still audit you. Coming up after the break, we explain how. Oh, I'm listening. I'm listening. We've also got to talk weather. We've got warmer temperatures working their way in, but where's the rain? We'll talk that coming up in just a bit.